Right, I'm just going to run you through the ingredients that I use for my Blue Creole cheese paste mix. First off the bat, cheap and cheerful Tesco everyday value dried skimmed milk. Now I use three to four teaspoons of this per cricket ball size paste mix. Two to three cloves of fresh garlic, let's run through a crusher. Now you don't have to use that, you can use dried powdered garlic. I don't really uh, prefer to use that. I prefer either puree, which you can get next to the, in the same aisle normally. That's um, usually got your tomato puree for your pizzas and stuff. Um, comes in those little tubes. Now I prefer to either use puree or fresh garlic that's crushed. Um, I'm not a big fan of using the powdered garlic, although it will suffice if need be. Moving on to that, good old sea salt. I tend to put in a couple of very, very generous pinches of that. It helps intensify the flavour and uh, certainly brings out the flavour of the garlic as well. Around eight slices of bread. Now I've taken all the crust off because you don't really want any crust on it at all when you're making a nice paste mix. You want it to be smooth. You don't want anything in there to obstruct the hook hold. Moving on from that, cheap and cheerful as the French blue cheese. That's 90 pence for 125 grams. Now what I will say is that you can go around your local delicatessen aisle or the other cheese aisles and keep an eye out for reductions and sometimes you do get big batches of different types of cheese allowing you to make different concoctions. I'm quite happy um, to use most cheeses um, especially the likes of blue cheese and camembert, brie, boisson which I've used in the past. Obviously the, the latter of those boisson um, only when it's reduced because it's hellishly expensive otherwise and it doesn't make for an economical cheese paste mix. But yeah so if you keep an eye out around your shops you can usually pick up reduced cheese makes it even more cheaper for your fishing and you can freeze that and it keeps for a very long time even becomes more stronger more potent anyway moving on from there krill now this is um krill in here this is just krill powder although what i normally use uh, which is the original contents of this packet is krill and shrimp powder um, i prefer the original which is um hinders um, because that is the particular one that I've got in here at the moment is Willy's Worms uh, Krill Powder and whilst it's working fine it's not as strong and not as potent as the original that obviously this packet was containing obviously um, that then makes your paste mix a bit more expensive because well, you're saving money one way um, because the actual Krill Powder is not quite as potent you end up using more and it's uh, a little bit more costly now in my cheese paste mix once again cricket ball size uh, cheese paste I use two to three level teaspoons of this just to give that nice extra flavor and extra dimension to the cheese paste mix but remember what I've said already this is just my cheese paste mix that I like to use but there's it's not a hard and fast rule there's lots of different mixtures that you yourself as an angler can come up with anyway I'm going to start mixing it but what I will do throughout the um, video I might speed the video up because I don't want to bore you chaps with showing me mixing a ball of cheese paste for 12 to 20 minutes anyway let's uh, crack on and get this show on the road shall we right that's the krill powder and the dried milk powder placed together I'm going to add a nice little bit of water to that make it into a nice thick paste before adding it to the rest of the cheese paste recipe You know, do the bread if you've got a food processor you can obviously make this job easier run it through the food food processor makes it a lot easier to mix or if you just got a handheld cheese grater mind you in your digits um, grate it for it once again makes it easier to mix but I'm gonna mix it just like this sliced and do the cheese paste like that just to show you um, if you haven't got a food processor or even cheese grater um, that is more than achievable anyway doing it like this and you know as I say a little bit more kind of realistic to show how much kneading you need um, if you haven't got a food processor quite simple garlic crusher now you will get some waste with a garlic crusher once you've crushed it through you end up with the rind or the outer husk of the garlic left inside don't waste this mix it in with your liquidized bread ground bait it's just um, you know waste not want not adds a nice little bit of a centrale and once again these are quite wasteful little things the presses 
um, you don't want to waste any of the remainder that's in the actual cup inside so quite simply just press that out as you can see all the juice is coming out there over this there you go you can see all that lovely fresh garlic coming out there once again as I say don't waste what's inside you're going to get a little bit left over and that it's just nice to put in with your ground bait mixture One, two. Bear in mind, anyone that isn't used in the household to cheese paste being made and the potency, <laughs> it can cause some, some funny looks and upturned noses um, when people do enter the kitchen. So maybe sometimes a good idea to have a window open, unless you're like me and you absolutely adore the smell of cheese paste although what happens I find is you get that tuned to the cheese paste that you're using you start thinking to yourself is it strong enough because you become immune to the flavour and the smell of it but, um, yeah just bear in mind that the uh, other household members might not always be too keen or share your passion and enjoyment for cheese paste right as you can see so far I've just very rustically mixed in that mixture that you saw which was the krill powder the garlic the salt and the milk powder now I'm just going to start putting in some of the cheese and gradually binding and kneading it you want to be when you're mixing this you want to use your use your worktop preferably I prefer to eventually once I've mixed it enough switch to rolling it on the worktop and you want to bring your knuckles in force them down into it and treat it like you're working with dough or kneading a loaf of bread and using the palm of your hand like so, push through, roll, push through, knead it, get, get all the lumps out. You want a very, very good consistency that's like plasticine, that's very malleable, that can be formed on the hook, and you want a nice consistency that you can still strike through and connect with a fish. And push your thumb through, get rid of any lumps, any lumps. You don't want that hook connecting with any rough bits of bread that you've not mixed together. I'll just show you at the moment what it looks like. Try not to make a mess on the kitchen floor. There we go. As you can see, you want that to all be smooth inside. You don't want it to have any lumps, any cheese lumps, any bits of the bread that's not been thoroughly pummeled and kneaded in. You want it nice and smooth, really good consistency. So take your time when you're mixing your cheese paste. Be thorough and be just with it. You know, don't don't think to yourself, oh that's good enough, it'll do. And then you get down the riverbank, you get maybe one bite during the day and it could be a very special fish. And you end up connecting with a lump that you've left in your cheese instead of connecting properly with the fish. I'm telling you that because I've been there ages back and um, don't want you to be taking the same process or same course or path even. Let's have a look at that, it's a lovely mixture, really nice. It's moving out beautifully now. no cracks, it's moist, it's pliable, you can just imagine chub smelling that from a mile away, just going round, you go round and you bait up a few swims with a few balls of cheese paste and the leak off of attractants is, hold on, oh, 
well, it's going to sound a bit strange, but to an angler, that smell mm, of cheese paste is just simply orgasmic. Absolutely superb and perfect chub attractor. And dare I say other species as well. Lots, well, I'll say lots, there's a few anglers that I know. Uh, I don't know if they still fish the canic in the chat that I'm thinking about. They used to always go on um, the canic. They used to take cheese paste, fishing for barbel. And um, obviously you'd pick up a few good chub as well, but you'd take it knowing full well that most of the anglers would be out on pellets, boilies, um, meat and such. And when they would have a hard day's fishing, he would invariably catch a few barbel on the cheese paste. For myself, all the years that I've used cheese paste, I've never had a barbel on it until recently. And um, that was a fish of eight pound caught in a very brown coloured river lodden. So there you go. I mean, as I say, I, I up until then never had a barbel on cheese paste. But as I say, there's quite a few anglers that swear by it for barbel. And I know there's been some good fish out of the river cone in recent weeks on cheese paste and it is a decent barbel bait so not just for one species very good as well for tench um, I know my father and I used to use cheese paste a lot and cheese for tench fishing it used to prove very good especially on lakes where other baits are a bit overused and the fish are a little bit wary and pressured Well, finally got there in the end, nice and smooth, nice consistency to it, as you can see, absolutely lovely mixture, very malleable, perfect for a few chub, and that's just my mixture, I like to use, nice plasticine consistency, and no cracks to it or anything like that, nice bit of moisture in there as well, as I say, Freeze this down, four it out, freeze it down, four it out, and you strengthen the flavour. And it's just a simply excellent bait to use. And just go through the ingredients again. That's krill powder, blue cheese, sliced white bread with the crust taken off, three teaspoons of the dried milk powder, and a couple of teaspoons of the krill, garlic, two cloves. I've used actually used three in this mixture. Uh, you can, as I say, use garlic puree, just as good. A couple of generous pinches of salt. And you're ready to mix it up. And hopefully you end up with a mixture very similar to this. And it will pick you up a few nice chub. What I like to do sometimes is just let the um, bait, once it's on the hook, if I want it to just toughen a little bit, just let, let it rest in just the side of the river. Um, the surface layer so you can keep an eye on it <laughs> and um, that just gives it a little bit of a hardened outer skin and um, stops the fish getting away with it if they are in the kind of mood when that's where they're smashing grabbing and you just want the paste to be a little bit tougher but personally on a whole as great as it is you don't need to do that and as you can see if I break it open for you there we go that is pretty smooth if I do say so myself so as I said to you, make sure you knead it well, get, your, get stuck in there and get your knuckles in there, crush and make sure it's a nice smooth mix, crush the bread down. As I say, you can use a food processor for the bread, makes it easier when mixing it in if it's finer, or a cheese grater. Now, fingers crossed, get a few more chub before the end of the fishing season. Hope you've enjoyed this short bait video remember it's not no hard and fast rule when it comes to cheese paste what be quite um, straightforward and what will work for some might not be favored by others just try your own thing beat your own path and be prepared to tweak the bait anyway i'll see you on my next video tight lines goodbye <laughs>